So I'm sitting inside one of the most bulletproof cars ever made in the world, a 1998 Toyota Camry V6, the 1MZ FE. Saw the check engine light was blinking. Has a misfire. What's the story of this car? So, um, the owner bought it pretty cheap from some uh, older people who didn't really change their oil on time, you know, did short trips. Car is does consume oil about a quart every thousand miles it only has a hundred and five thousand miles so he's been running it doing full synthetic oil changes every three thousand miles everything's going great just the other day he took a trip about hour and a half from here on the highway and he said he got some gas at a you know gas station and the car started running really poorly and he was like hey the check engine lights blinking what the heck since he was far, you know, from from here, he took it to a local shop. Let's see what what they found. So they towed it. Check for misfire. Computer diagnostics. Cylinder four misfire. Compression test. Cylinder uh, only 60 psi. Needs engine. So are you telling me that this? Supposedly bulletproof Toyota needs an engine at 105,000 miles. I find that hard to believe, but by the way it's running, it feels like a compression problem. So if you raise the RPMs up a little bit, it actually runs pretty smooth. Let's read the trouble codes. Look at some misfire counters. You, know, you put it under load, you, you definitely feel a miss. If you raise the RPMs up, yeah, it's still there. I took it for a test drive. It seems to cruise just fine. But when you're at the lower RPMs, under some load, da -da 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 -da, you feel that misfire. Okay. Read fault code. Ooh, cylinder two misfire detected current, cylinder four misfire detected current, igniter circuit number one current. Interesting. In the data stream, we do have misfire counters on a 98 Camry here. So let's take advantage of that. It definitely feels like a single cylinder misfire. One, two, three, four, five, six. So right now the counters are showing nothing. Maybe because we have a trouble code stored. Oh no, there's cylinder number four. just a little slow data refresh here yep there it goes constant miss put it in park seems to have stabilized check engine it's not flashing right now so at idle not under load seems to be okay put in drive da, 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 da. oh there we go again so definitely suspecting cylinder number four pa, 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 pa. all right Pull in the shop. All 
the cylinders are easily accessible, which is nice. So two, four, and six. The injectors are right here. You can easily unplug injectors. Let's see, cylinder number six. Cylinder number four. No contribution. Cylinder number two. Definitely contributing. Okay. We'll start with a relative compression test. Just to see if we have one low hump. We can even shut the car down. Unplug the ignition coils, just disable the ignition, crank it over. And just listen to the cranking. That'll give us enough direction. Okay, let's go. Oh yeah. Yep. Might as well just get out the bore scope and the pressure transducer, go directly for cylinder number four. I don't know what we're gonna find. A burnt valve. Very strange for one of these you know 90s Toyota V6 engines. Well, no need for a pressure transducer here. Quickest misfire diagnosis. Popped out the plug, got a bore scope, and we got a chipped burnt valve right there. Now is that the intake or exhaust? Oh, it looks like a lot of oil deposits. So probably just due to oil burning. Yep, we got a chunk missing. Ah, uh, that's a shame. So we'll uh, show this to the owner. Got to rip this head off, unfortunately. But what about the other valves? You know, we're just or just one head. What about the other head? I don't know. If it was my car, eh, I would probably. If the parts are available, just rip the cylinder head off and replace, I guess, the uh, the valve seals and whichever valves are burnt. I'm assuming that's the exhaust valve. Usually those are the ones that burn. So we'll take this picture and send it to the owner. Yeah, pressure transducer wouldn't have shown anything too interesting. Just low compression blow by that's a shame so apparently these things are not bulletproof if you neglect them burnt valve on a Toyota 1M ZFE first time I've seen one uh, like this if you remember the Geo Prism the 96 Geo Prism with the uh, the 1.6 four banger that thing was burning about a quarter every 400 miles of oil and it was starting to run really poorly because the valves were so gunked up there was no compression. But we got away with just cleaning, thoroughly cleaning all the valves, putting a new head gasket on, and it did not burn a drop of oil after that. It ran perfect until it was sold and then I think traded in for, for a Subaru or something. As far as I know, that thing's still on the road. So we'll uh, do a little more research, see which valve it is, and then... Uh, quote the owner on the repairs. Alright, back to the 1998 Toyota Camry V6. Uh, interesting story. So, I quoted the customer on replacing the number cylinder number 4 exhaust valves. Again, I asked him, how far do you want to take this project? It's still going to be an oil burner. The other exhaust valves might be 
kind of close, you know, on their way out, getting burned. And uh, during that time, my loner 1992 Oldsmobile Silhouette suffered a heart attack. An oil cooler line popped off, dumped all the oil out. This is while a customer was borrowing it. Made it 10 miles from here and basically seized the engine solid. Sad. But silver lining is uh, the van is not going to the crusher. Uh, a YouTube fan reached out and I told him, take it, otherwise it's going to be crushed. He's like, Th that's really cool. I have a 96 uh, Pontiac Bonneville supercharged that's all rusted out, but the drivetrain's still good. So he picked up the van and hopefully soon that van will be back on the road in supercharged form. So look out for that um, once he gets that done. I'll have to feature that in a video. Ninety-two Oldsmobile Silhouette. So, if you remember from the post, that's my loaner van, someone borrowed it, and this oil cooler line right here came off because four years ago I wasn't proficient enough to clamp this hose on and well it blew off when the van was cold engine locked up so now a viewer reached out to me I said someone just take this thing I don't want to see it crushed it would be sad and they want to swap a whole drivetrain into this thing a supercharged from a supercharged 96 Pontiac you know 3.8 liter so Aiden here he's gonna lead the project I guess and his friend Tom are you gonna help him out Tom uh, I do <laughs> oh you do most of the work anyways okay <laughs> So, uh, I mean... He, he does the stuff that I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what Tim does. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it looks like these guys will, you know, I, I asked them, is this high on the priority list? They're like, yeah, we'll get it done. So, I'm just excited that it's not going into the crusher. And they'll keep me updated. And once the van is up and running with the supercharged V6, I want to get a video of that and maybe take it for a test drive. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> that probably sometime this summer or whenever. So that's the history, that's the story of the silhouette. It'll be starting its second life soon enough. Put that back in there, Joel. So anyways, I was out, you know, the van is broken. I'm like, I kind of need another loaner car. It's nice to have a spare car around. And I asked the customer here, how much do you want for this Camry? Cash, as is, you know, with the burnt valves kind of dinged up. He's like, thousand bucks. Sold. <laughs> so now it's my Toyota Camry. 105,000 miles with a burnt exhaust valve. So this car, again, I want to use it occasionally as a loaner, but I still want it to be reliable. Um, it won't be like long. It'll be able to do long trips, but if it's occasional use only, I just want to get it fixed so it runs well. Not necessarily do a full-on engine rebuild with piston rings and all that stuff. We're going the bare minimum. Tearing off the cylinder head to replace some exhaust valves. So I have two brand new OEM Toyota valves to install in cylinder number four. Um, Putting in new spark plugs, a cam seal, head gasket, obviously, intake manifold gaskets, and not showing all the nuts and bolts here. But this is why these engines from Toyota from you know 90s through 2000s are simply brilliant. Super easy to work on. Everything comes apart. Plenty of room, and you see the valve train is pretty much bomb proof no rocker arms no little you know lash hydraulic lash adjusters or needle bearings or anything to go bad just two camshafts on buckets pushing on the valves simple timing belt it's non interference and to drive the other cam this is an ingenious design 
uh, it's sprockets, or rather gears. You see, this is a double gear where the two gears are spring loaded against each other, and that cuts down on the noise in this uh, gear train. So, for disassembly, there's a little hole right here that you screw in an appropriate bolt that holds these two gears together so they don't uh, spring load apart while taking the camshafts off. So that's a... Maybe I'll mark that with some red tape so I don't forget about it. Loosened up the cam bolt right here. Again, didn't even touch the belts. Just took the tensioner off so we have plenty of slack. All we're doing is getting the cylinder head off. So exhaust manifold, I'll have to remove the intake manifold, throttle bodies out of the way, intake plenums out of the way. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. See binder clips are holding the belt on the sprocket. Put that to the side, a couple of bolts there. And we'll get this head off. Replace two valves. I'll get that on camera. Put this thing back together. It'll be nice, reliable, fast loaner vehicle. And uh, yeah, just keeping them on the road. Intake manifold. You should just swing over here like everything else without disconnecting too many hoses or lines. So let's crack these cam caps loose. So intake cam comes off first. And the exhaust camshaft. And you can, really can't mess this up. Like I said, Toyotas are very logical. You have your cam caps labeled I1, I2, I3, I4, I5 with the arrow pointing towards the belt. And then E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5. Make sure the dots are lined up and that our temporary service bolt is installed. So you see the cam lobes are pretty much in there. Closed state. That one's pushing a little bit maybe. But let's just take all the caps off. And put them in order in our parts box. And this is the last one. All right, so just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There's I4. This camera shaft is ready to come out nice and easy. For the exhaust.
So for the loosening sequence for the head bolts, we're going to follow this picture right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a 12.12 12 millimeter socket here. So let's see if we can crack these guys loose. Oh, they're tight. <laughs> There's one. That's got to be over, well over 100 foot-pounds for breakaway torque. I mean, these things have, have been in here for 25 years, keep in mind. Five. <laughs> One more. <clears throat> now, buzz all these out. All right, here we go. Let's see if it's loose. <laughs> there we go. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Ah, we got one bolt on this inner timing cover. Sneaky. Let's uh, buzz that guy off. See a lot of oil burning deposits. I mean, I guess it could be worse. This one wasn't firing very well, that's why it has a little extra carbon on it, but we'll clean it up. Let's go replace some valves. Alright. Let's see what we're after. Wow. That is pretty intense. There's definitely a hole in the valve. How does that happen? All the other ones look pretty mint. 
and it was still running halfway decent even with that huge hole. So we're just replacing the two on two exhaust valves in number four. We'll pop this thing back together. Now I don't know if this is a defect because I know some 1MZ engines that are oil burners and have gone, you know, 500,000 miles, but this one, for some reason, decided to burn a valve. So, interesting.